Hello, my name is Mark Glazier, chairman of Nutribio Labs, a sports supplement brand I founded over two decades ago. Now let me get right to the point here. I'm going to do something I have never done in the 20 plus years I've been in this industry. I'm going to call out another brand owner, Jim Stefani, for making false claims about his protein and more importantly about my protein. Now, Jim recently did a couple of videos where he makes some outrageous statements. One is that his protein is the only protein blend on the market that is not a proprietary blend and basically goes on to say that everybody else is basically cheating and lying. Now, he took a lot of heat for that and I guess to defend his false claims, he decides to attack my muscle matrix protein, which is why I'm responding here. And he basically says that this label makes no sense, that the accuracy of it is questionable, it's not spec'd out. He even quotes my numbers of protein value and says they don't add up and says my product is suspect. Now, I'm not going to criticize Jim himself. I think he's done a lot of good in the industry over the years, but what I am gonna do is a heads up comparison of these two proteins, Jim's Pro Gym and my muscle matrix. And we're going to do the math here behind the products. We're going to look at the numbers on the supplement facts panels, and we're going to see which two of these products, which of these products actually lives up to the claims being made by the owners, and that would be Jim and myself. So whenever you want to look at a protein powder and evaluate, the first thing you want to do is figure out the protein value. How much of this container is actually real protein, complete protein? And to do that, you look at the protein per serving, in this case 25, and you divide it into the total serving size. 29.9. That gives you in this product 83.6%. So 83.6% of this tub is complete protein, the protein that your muscle is going to actually use to build and repair. Let's take a look at Jim's and see how his specs out. Jim has 24 grams of protein. Divide that into a serving size of 34.5 and you get 69.5. So this is only 69.5% protein. Almost a third of this tub is not protein and this is his best flavor. His s'mores is about 7% lower in protein value, and his chocolate is worse than that. Now, how is it? How is it that two proteins in the same category, both blended proteins, with the purpose of sustained release amino acid to muscle tissue, how can one be at 83.6 and one be down at 69.5? How can this be so much higher, 14% higher in protein value than this product? Well, let's look at the numbers. So this is my muscle matrix, which Jim says the numbers don't add up. Let's check those numbers. I have five ingredients only in here. It's a very clean protein. My two active ingredients, whey protein isolate is 16.1 grams and micellar casein at 13.2 grams. I also list my inactives right here along with their dosages. So natural vanilla flavor, 417 milligrams, xanthan gum 167, and sucralose 37. If you add all five of those up, you get 29.9 grams. If you look at my total serving size, 29.9 grams. They add up exact. Now I go a step further in disclosure of my label because where I show you the total amount of isolate that I'm using, I also show you the yield, how much complete protein is in this, in this product. Now, why two different numbers? And that's because whey protein, isolate, micellar, casein, egg, none of these proteins are really protein. They're only sources of protein. A percentage of them are protein. So what you have to do is you have to look at how much total of the source you're using and look at the yield. My whey protein isolate yields 14.3 grams of complete protein and my micellar casein yields 10.7 grams of complete protein. Add them together and you get 25 grams. My serving size is 25 grams of protein. So all of my numbers spec out exactly to within a milligram accuracy. This is a non-proprietary, fully disclosed, fully transparent label. Now let's take a look at Jim's and see how his specs out. So here's his supplement facts panel. He claims it's a non-proprietary brand product, so you would expect to see all of his active ingredients listed here along with the dosage. But when you look at Jim's supplement facts panel, you realize there are no dosages listed. A matter of fact, there are no ingredients, active or inactive, listed in the supplement facts panel and no proprietary blends. There's nothing in here. How is that possible? How can he have a supplement facts panel and not list any of his ingredients? Well, there's different ways to do labeling. There is the open way where you do a transparent label with no prop lens, fully disclosed like My Muscle Matrix. That's where you tell the consumer everything about the product. Then there is the proprietary blend method where you hide the amounts of the individual ingredients in proprietary blends and only tell the total dosage. That's a more deceptive way of doing it where the consumer doesn't know much about your product. But there's a third way. And the third way is the most deceptive way. And I call it ingredient cloaking. Now this is totally legal by the way, 
And if you look up and go Google uh, 21 CFR 101.36, that's actually the federal regulation that defines proprietary blends and labels, and you can read all about this. So what is ingredient cloaking? Well, there's a section under the supplement facts panel right here that's called the ingredient statement. And that's that fine print, that really small print that nobody ever reads. And the regulation says that if you want to hide all your ingredients, if you don't want to list any of your ingredients up here and don't want to list any of their dosages, you can just put them down here. And when you list them down here, you don't have to tell the consumer the amount of the individual ingredient, and you don't even have to tell the consumer the amount of your proprietary blends. You can fully hide, you can keep your consumer totally in the dark about your ingredients. You cannot tell them a damn thing, and that is legal. So let's see if that's what's happening here. Because there's nothing up here. Well, the first ingredient on Jim's ingredient statement is protein blend. Whey protein isolate, isolate casein, milk protein isolate, and egg, all in parentheses. Well, folks, that is, plain and simple, a proprietary blend. Four active ingredients, in parentheses, behind the heading protein blend. This is a proprietary blend. A matter of fact, this product has 19 ingredients in it, and not one of those ingredients has a dosage listed anywhere on this label. Now, Jim does have some numbers up here that makes it a little confusing. Now, in his video and on his label, he claims that these are his protein sources. This is the exact amount of protein that he puts in each serving. But when we add those four proteins up, we get 24 grams. When we look at his complete protein per serving, it's 24 grams. Well, we know that's not possible. 24 grams of source proteins cannot equal 24 grams of complete protein. It's impossible. Now, what's going on here? I don't think Jim's lying. I just think he's confused. I don't think he knows the difference between a source protein and a yield of protein. When he attacks my product, he actually quotes my source protein numbers and admits he doesn't understand them. They don't make any sense to him. That's because he doesn't understand how to read a label. This most probably is not his source protein like he claims. This is probably his yield protein, how much protein, is complete protein, is coming out of there. So now we know what this label really is. It is a full proprietary blend, but why? We haven't answered why muscle matrix is so much higher and this is so much lower in protein value. So let's look at the numbers and see if we can do that. Now, I've been in the industry over 20 years as a manufacturer for 15 years now, so I've learned a little bit about analyzing and looking at products. The first thing I will look at is the proteins to see the quality of each of the proteins. Because like milk protein isolate can go from 70 up to 90%. So if you're using a low grade protein, you have to use a lot more of it, which brings your protein value or your protein ratio down. So one possibility why this might be such a low value protein is his source proteins can be lower grade, lower quality proteins. So he has to use a lot more of them, bringing the protein ratio down. Now I said that's a possibility. I can't say that for a fact because he doesn't give enough disclosure about his ingredients in here to calculate any of that. Well, what else can happen? Well, the second thing I would evaluate here is that ingredient statement, that fine print. And when we look at that, we see there's a lot more ingredients in here, and each of those ingredients will bring down the protein source. Let's see what they are. Well, the first was his proprietary blend of protein. Then he has a second proprietary blend, non-dairy creamer, and that includes sunflower oil, corn syrup, solids, uh, sodium casein, casein mono, mono and diglycerides, dipotassium phosphate, tricalcium phosphate, soy lecithin, tocopherols, natural and artificial flavors, guar gum, sucrose, lecithin, and silicon dioxide. So he's got some excipients in there. He's got what I would consider some fillers in there. Um, but what's, let's look at the most prevalent ingredient in there, which would be the second one, and that is this non-dairy creamer. What exactly is non-dairy creamer? Well, it's basically fat and sugar. This is non-dairy creamer. That cheap stuff you see at coffee bars where they don't want to give you real cream, that's what it is. It's fat and sugar. It's corn syrup solids and it's sunflower. So why would you put creamer into a high grade protein powder. Well, it's simple. This stuff is dirt cheap. It's without a doubt the cheapest ingredient in here by far. So when you fill this tub with dairy creamer or non-dairy creamer, you have to take protein value out. The cost of the tub goes down, but the protein ratio, the protein value goes down. So that's a definite reason while this might be a lower grade at 69% value than my 83.6%. But here's what I don't get about using this dairy creamer. You know, when you look at his product, he's touting the hell out of the quality of his proteins. His first and highest value one is whey protein isolate. And what is whey protein isolate? It's whey, which starts out as 95 junk and almost 4 to 5% protein. And you have to filter out the fat, filter out the lactose, the cholesterol, and all the other shit. And then you get a high-grade whey protein isolate that's very, very expensive. 
Well, if you're going to spend that effort, time, and money to put a whey protein isolate in here, why take the stuff that you just filtered out and basically pour it right back into the bottle? That's what this is. Whey protein isolate plus dairy creamer or non-dairy creamer is basically the same as adding a low-grade whey protein concentrate into your product. So why not do that? Why not keep your label simple? Because if you don't put isolate on there, you can't tout the benefits. It's all marketing hype. So there you have it. There's an analysis too. But you know what? To be fair, I have to show one more thing. I did not list my fine print. I didn't, we didn't talk about that. So let's look at my ingredient statement, my fine print. And there it is. Other ingredients. And then followed by the words, absolutely none. Those are my other ingredients. Absolutely none. How can I make that statement? Because every single ingredient in my product is listed in the top supplement facts section with absolutely every dosage listed along with it. That is a fully disclosed, fully transparent, non-proprietary blended product, while this is a proprietary blend, fully non-transparent, non-disclosed label. That's why this is 83.6% protein, while this is down at 69.5% protein. So there you have it. Now, I got to tell you, I hated doing this. Like I said, in 20 years, I have never attacked another brand or company like this. But you know what? If you're going to attack my company, I've got to respond because I have a lot of integrity behind my product. I spent the last 20 years building these products up. And 15 years ago is when I made a commitment to my customers. Not yesterday, not last week, 15 years ago, that I would remove all proprietary blends from my products, that I would never have a proprietary blend. And now I have 360 products in my line made right here in this building, which is an FDA registered, FDA inspected CGMP facility. And not one of those 360 products has a proprietary blend. Every single one of them is a fully disclosed, fully transparent label. No fillers, no excipients in my products, full therapeutic dosages, and every product made right here where I can oversee and I can control the quality of every single ingredient, the manufacturing process straight through, and the finished product. That is the integrity I put behind my product and my line. Thank you for your listening. 80% protein, very close to WPI, which is 90. 10% difference, which means more lactose. If you're lactose intolerant, you can't use it probably. A little more sugar, a little more fat, a little less protein and amino acid. An economical version, but still a 